Hey gang, today on Valero Navari, we are gonna make over this cute little blanket chest into a yummy sherbet rainbow magical piece. So stay tuned and we will get started. Do you guys wanna see how I did this? Stay tuned and we're gonna get started. done two coats of boss on this piece and the first step what I do when I blend is I lay down a base coat of the colors that I'm going to use so what I'm going to do next is I'm just going to lay down a base coat and what this allows me to do is it allows me to know the placement of my colors and where I want them and it also is going to give me that extra coat so that when I do go in and blend the second coat I don't work it down to the existing finish or down to the boss so right now, all I'm doing is doing a base coat of the colors that I'll be using. What I am gonna be using is Blueberry by Dixie Belle, Eat Blue, Farmhouse Green, Rebel Yellow, Florida Orange, Flamingo, and Peony. I also am going to have my Mr. Bottle on hand. I have a paper towel on hand. I'm going to have a brush for each color that I'm using, and I'm also gonna have a neutral brush. Okay, so if you've ever watched any of my blending videos before, I've said this before, you can work in sections. So when we do this, I'll explain it a little bit better. So that way, if you don't have that many brushes, that's okay. You will just work in sections and then clean your brush and move on to the next section. So right now, we're just laying down a base coat. This piece now has a base coat on it. As you can see, the front, I've already blended the side, so the front has a base coat on it and it is dry. So I'm gonna get really close because, oops, I'm gonna get really close because I really want you to see this and I'm just gonna kinda work in this section and explain to you how I blend this. 
And then I'm just going to show you on video without me talking how I blend the entire thing. But I want to focus on this section so that way I can show you how I blend this. And then it's just going to be the same process across this entire piece. So I want to break it down in a smaller section first. Okay, so my top color is blueberry. I'm going to take my blueberry brush and the second color is haint blue. I'm going to have my haint blue brush and then I'm going to have a neutral brush. This is just my flat large and this is going to be to feather the piece. So the first thing that I'm going to do is at this point, I'm going to use this as an opportunity to put my second coat on here. And so I'm just going to lay down my second coat of blueberry. And I'll worry about the sides later. I just want to focus on this area so that I can show you how to blend. So that's my second coat of blueberry. I'm going to put my second coat of paint blue. I don't use a ton of paint blue. The paint blue really is used to kind of bridge the gap between the farmhouse green and the blueberry. So if you want to, you could probably omit this color and just go from blueberry to farmhouse green. I just like the softness of it. So now I've put my second coat of paint blue and of blueberry. I'm gonna go back with my blueberry brush and this is already wet. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to mist this just ever so slightly. I don't know if you saw, I just literally went over it like that. And I'm gonna take my blueberry and I'm gonna kind of go in circles down into my paint blue right at this transition line. I'm just doing circles for right now. Now I'm gonna take my paint blue brush and I'm going to go up into here and do some circles. Don't worry about this part right here with the farmhouse green. That is something we'll work on in a second. What I'm trying to do is just kind of transition this piece. So I'm doing circles. Now I'm gonna take my brush and go horizontal. And if you get little bristles, that's fine. Just pull it off. I'm gonna go vertical. Okay, and so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mist it one more time. I'm gonna take my neutral brush and just kind of start at the top and work my way down lightly and I'm feathering this. You can go diagonal if you want and I'm just feathering that area. So what that's done is that's blended those two colors and it's kind of bridged the gap between the farmhouse green and the blueberry. So if you do not have, my cuckoo clock is about to go off. I just got it in the black forest, it's super cute. So if you don't have a bunch of br uh, brushes, what you would do at this point is you would wash your blueberry brush, okay? And you would use the blueberry brush for your farmhouse green and you would keep your haint blue brush, okay? You would keep the haint blue one. So omit the blueberry and when you wash the blueberry, you will use that for your farmhouse green, okay? And so you're just cleaning and moving around brushes. Make sure that you, when you, after you wash it, you squeeze it really tight so that way you get all the excess water out. You want it, your brushes to be damp. You do not want them to be soaking. So then you're gonna move on to the next spot. So we're gonna do farmhouse green and haint blue next. Remember, we already did a second coat of the haint blue. So I'm gonna take this opportunity to do my second coat of my farmhouse green. I'm just gonna kind of go right here. Smooth it out. I'm gonna take my haint blue brush and I'm not gonna add water. It's really, as long as your situation or as long as your area has moisture, you don't always need to use water. So I'm going to do this without water so I can show you how you can do it with and without water. So I'm gonna take my haint blue brush and I'm gonna do my circles, okay? Down into my farmhouse screen. And you can see that's already kind of softened that up. I'm gonna take my farmhouse green and I'm just gonna do some circles over that same exact area. And I'll probably take my haint blue brush at this point. And this is the brush where I'm going to mist it just a little bit and I'm going to kind of feather it. This is not my neutral brush, this is my haint blue brush. And I'm just gonna go down into that farmhouse green a little bit. and it's really starting to come along. So I'm gonna take my neutral brush again. My neutral brush has already got the blue on it, right? That's the same color that I, this is the same brush that I used for that one. So I'm gonna kind of mist it with my mister bottle 
and I'm gonna clean it off to get a little bit of that excess blue off. And then what I'm gonna do is mist that area and I'm gonna start right here and just kind of feather it. Go down, go like this, and that helps feather it more. So now what we're gonna do is you're gonna get rid of your paint blue brush. You're gonna clean it, cover it up, let's cover it up. Remember, this is if you don't have a brush for each color. If you do, then use this, the brush for each color. But if you don't, clean your paint blue and then you're gonna use the paint blue brush for your lemonade. Or you're, you're gonna use the paint blue brush for your rebel yellow. Keep your farmhouse green brush and go to the next section. So now we're moving on to our farmhouse green and our rebel yellow. I'm gonna move this a little bit closer. We're gonna get, so get a little bit closer there. Okay, so the farmhouse green already has its second coat, right? So we're gonna take this opportunity to do our second coat of rebel yellow. Since I'm already here and it is actually dried just a little bit, I'm gonna add a little bit of moisture. I'm gonna take my farmhouse green and I'm going to circle it. Now, you guys might be asking, how do you choose which one you do first? It really doesn't matter. You could have done Rebel Yellow first or you do farmhouse green, as long as you do it with both. So now I'm going my Rebel Yellow. I'm just kind of doing, working in circles and I'm going to mist it and I'm gonna go back to my farmhouse green and I'm going to go in long strokes. Vertical, lightly, light-handed. Okay, so you see how that has blended. Now I'm gonna take my neutral brush. I'm gonna spray it a little bit, get that excess blue off. I'm going to mist that area and I'm just gonna take my neutral brush and just lightly feather it and boom there is that part that is blended so now we're going to move down to the florida orange okay so this florida orange i'm actually going to use the rebel yellow to lighten up the florida orange a little bit because this orange i want this to look kind of like sherbet and later on i'm going to put some white wax on it but i do want to use the yellow to kind of soften this up a little bit so you'll see how i do that but at this point you're going to put your farmhouse green away and you're going to use your farmhouse green brush to do your florida orange if you don't have a brush for each one so Again, we're gonna use this opportunity to do our second coat of Florida Orange. So here we go, you guys see how, this is pretty bright in comparison to the colors that we've been using. So here we've got Florida Orange, and I'm gonna take my Rebel Yellow, and I'm going to, we're gonna mist this area, and I'm going to do circles down into my Florida Orange, almost a little bit over my Florida Orange because this is how I'm gonna soften it up. I'm not trying to erase the Florida orange, I'm just trying to kind of make it so it's a little bit lighter. So you see how I've kind of lightened it up a little bit. I'm gonna go over that Florida orange with my Rebel Yellow. So it's still orange, but it's not quite as boom in your face. I'm. This has taken on a lot of orange, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to mist it and clean it up since this is my Rebel Yellow brush. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to mist it. Here's my Rebel Yellow. And I'm going to go in circles with it. Now I'm gonna take my orange and I'm not gonna put any more paint on it. I'm just gonna use what was on it and I'm gonna take my orange and very lightly go in circles. Now I'm gonna take my Rebel Yellow and I'm going to go horizontal, okay? I'm gonna go vertical. And this part is really where my neutral brush is gonna come into play. This is, the neutral brush is really gonna help at this point. I'm gonna add a little bit more Rebel Yellow right here. 
just to soften that up just a little bit more. Just a little dabble, do ya? Okay, now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to mist it ever so slightly, take my neutral brush and start up here and just work my way down, okay? Doing the same concept. Go like this. And voila, we have our Rebel Yellow and our Florida Orange and it has softened it up. So now we're gonna move on to the Florida Orange and our Flamingo. So now I'm actually going to keep my Rebel Yellow out in case I need to soften anything. And so at this point, I'm going to, you probably would need another brush. You don't have to keep the Rebel Yellow out if you don't want to, but we're gonna move down to Flamingo. So I'm going to go down here and this is the opportunity where we take our, we take this opportunity to do our second coat of Flamingo. So we've got our Flamingo right here. Go up into that Florida orange. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my Florida orange brush and I'm not going to add any more Florida orange right now. And I'm going to go in circles into that flamingo because there's the orange is so concentrated. The color is that you really don't need to keep on dipping it in there. The orange really sticks on this brush. I'm going to do circles. Okay. And now I'm going to take my flamingo and I'm going to do circles up into my Florida orange. And I'm actually going to mist this. I'm gonna take my Florida orange and go like this, horizontal. I'm gonna go vertical with it. Okay. And now I'm gonna take my neutral brush and I'm going to soften it up. So here's my neutral brush. I'm gonna start up in the rebel yellow and work my way down. So I can try to pull a little bit of that rebel yellow down into it to soften it up ever so slightly. So you can do like that and that is done. So now we're going to move on to the peony and the flamingo. All right. So I repositioned my camera so we can get down here. So we're going to take this opportunity to do our second coat of our peony. We're going to go down here. You could probably just go down to the very bottom in a few minutes. You're going to do this coat of peony. And then I'm going to take my flamingo and I'm actually going to just do a light coat with the paint right here. And kind of go down a little bit into that peony. I'm gonna take a little bit more of my flamingo, just a super tiny spot, and I'm gonna do some circles down into our peony. Now I'm gonna take my peony, and I'm gonna do some circles. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mist it. I misted it, and I'm gonna go horizontal down into the peony, do some Vertical. I'm gonna take my neutral brush and it's got a little bit of orange on it, which is okay because these colors are really pretty with the orange. So I'm just gonna mist it. I'm actually gonna go up into my Florida orange a little bit, see if we can pull it down and just lightly pull it up, do a little bit of a diagonal and boom, that is how you do it. And I'll probably go over here and concentrate on the side and do it like that. And then that's how I'm gonna do the rest of it. So that is how you blend. You can see it from the bottom to the top. And that is how you blend those colors. So I'm gonna step back and I'm gonna do the rest of it and you can just watch. I thought that we had something special. I thought I handled this so well. But somehow it came to an end I was looking for a remedy I don't know who's in front of me I was looking for a remedy I don't know who's in front of me yeah. Push it back, hold you close Start a fight, there you go I get a stable, I get a stable In my bed all alone I get unstable. Remember the first time I met. 
piece has dried now, as you can see, it is blended. And so what I want to do is I want to lighten it up just a little bit more. So I'm going to show you. I'm actually going to put some stain wax and white over top of it. And it's going to lighten it up just a little bit and it's going to get that white wax in these creases right here and just add a little bit more character. Before I add any kind of colored wax to my paint, I always spray it with my Easy Peasy Spray Wax. You don't have to, but I spray it with this and that way it allows my, paint, my wax to move a little bit better. And so all I do is just actually just spray it like this and I'm going to allow this I'm gonna allow this to dry for about an hour and then we're gonna come back and we are going to add the white wax. Okay, so now this has dried for an hour and we're gonna add the white wax. So I just have my wax in my jar and I have a wax brush. This is a redesign with Primo wax brush that I have, but you can use any wax brush that you want. It's a natural bristle. And so what I'm, I also have a mister bottle because I'm gonna show you how I wipe back the wax a little bit easier with misting water and I have a paper towel. Okay, so those are the things that you're gonna need. And you're just going to add your wax all over the piece, okay? So I'm gonna start and go into these crevices right here. And I'm gonna add just a little bit more into the crevices so that I know that that gets right into those accents. I'm also going to go up here, make sure I get up in this area too. And I'm just gonna go over the entire piece. I'm just going over the edges right now, just so that I know that I get into all those little cracks and crevices. I wait 24 hours to wax my piece also after I'm done painting because if I don't, then you run the risk of pulling your paint off. There's not really a rhyme or reason of how I put my wax on. I go in a few different ways. And the reason why I go in a few different ways is so I can get into all that wood grain. So I'll go horizontal and I will go vertical so that I can hit every aspect of that. And I'll jab it in there. And I can see I want a little bit more wax up there in that crack. Okay, and then I'm gonna actually go over this ornate part right here. Get down, you can go at different angles to get that wax all in there. <clears throat> okay, so we'll just work on this part right here. Now, I want to just, this wax is not, you, when you, after you wipe it back, if you feel like wax is not in these little crevices, you can always go over it again. So now what I'm going to show you, so now what I'm going to show you is how I wipe it back. And actually I'm going to put wax up here too. I'm just working on this little section here. I'm gonna wax the entire piece, but I'm working on this section so that I can just show you how I do this. And this lightens it up and gives it even more of a sherbet look. That's what I'm going for, some sherbet. Okay, so you can take a lint-free rag, t-shirt, paper towel, whatever, and you could wipe this back without having water, okay? I just like to mist a little bit of water because this wax is water-based. It allows me to pull it a little bit easier and I'm not having to put as much pressure down on the surface. So I just mist it just ever so slightly. And then I take a paper towel and I just go across. It's on wheels. And I go across like this. Okay. And I wipe it back. 
And I'm gonna do the same thing over here. I try to go in the direction that the design is or the wood grain. So this is going vertical, this is going horizontal. So if you can see right here, you've got some of those horizontal, you or you have some things going vertical. I don't like that, so I'm gonna go back over it and kind of erase that because I don't like it having that streaky look. So I'm just going to go over the raised areas and we're gonna just mist this. Get down in that little recessed area. When I am pulling it off of a flat surface, I always go in the same direction because I just told you I don't like streaky wax. And so I always go in the same direction. And so I go down and then I'll go across just so that it's all even. I don't want streaks in my wax. I just, I don't know. If you like it, that's good. If you don't, well, then you're like me. So I'm going to spray this a little bit more. And you can leave wax in these little areas right here. You don't have to pull those back. And you can see it's lightened it up. So if you see right here versus that, it has lightened it up a little bit to just add that more, more of a sherbet look that I want. So now we're gonna go down to this part. I'm gonna go down right here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mist this, hold on to it so it doesn't fly away because it's on wheels. And I'm just going over it ever so slightly, okay? If you want that white to stay in these areas, just leave it. If you want to wipe back that, you just go in there and wipe back that wax down there in those areas. So you can do that or you can, you could have left the white. If you decide that you like the way the white looked, you can just add it back. So I'll show you, okay. Say I was like, oh, I really liked how that white looked. You can just go right back, go over it again and wipe over that and the white is back, okay? So that is how I wipe back my wax. Now, it's really important to note that this is a water-based wax. So 15 to 20 minutes, you're gonna come back and you need to buff this. Now, you're not gonna buff these little areas in here because you want that wax to stay. So eventually this is gonna dry in, in these creases and crevices, but the flat areas, you wanna come back 15, 20 minutes later, get a lint-free rag and just buff it. Go over it like this. You don't have to do it crazy. Just go in circles and go like this. And your butt, what you're doing at that point is buffing that wax into the finish so that you have a more durable finish. So that's what you're gonna to wanna to do with the wax. And I'm gonna do this on the entire piece, but it's super easy. That is exactly how I do it. You hurt me too
Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I am super in love with my little Sherbert blanket chest. I hope that you guys found this helpful and useful and now you're excited to blend with bright colors and use some white wax and maybe strip down some raw wood and use wax on it. So again, thank you so much. If you are not subscribed, please hit that subscribe button and then hit the bell and you'll get all the latest videos from me. Also, again, everything we use is in that description below. So if you want to purchase it, click on it and it'll take you right where you need to be. So thank you again so much. Happy creating and I will see you guys next time.